everyone. I'm Captain Logan of Geek Evolution, and welcome to Pop Culture Comics Presents Captain Logan's Comic Book Week in Review. I'll be reviewing issues I picked up this week and giving you a sneak peek at other titles that might pique your interest. First up, Daredevil number 511. So the main Daredevil title has really been where the humanity of the Shadowlands story is. With Daredevil holing himself up inside his tower and being the mysterious evil beast thing, his own book right now is dominated by his old friends. I really feel for Foggy Nelson, and I appreciate his devotion for his friend. He says Matt may have given up on him, but he refuses to give up on Matt. The book does a great job of making me care about what he's going through, and he's put into a peril at the end of the issue that's both sad and gripping. I love... Roberto Della Torre's gritty and somewhat sketchy art. I still imagine not nearly enough people reading this along with the Shadowland Mini. The best stuff in this event is, in my opinion, right here in Daredevil. Carnage number one. This Carnage miniseries is off to an unbelievably good start as Spider-Man teams up with Iron Man to stop the doppelganger spider who pops up out of nowhere and starts wreaking havoc. Familiar things start to happen that are reminiscent of the last time Carnage got his evil band of psycho supervillains together, and while Carnage itself doesn't appear quite yet, there's an awesome and grandiose setup here that focuses mainly on Spidey and, and Iron Man. These two are a lot of fun together, and it makes me want to see them as a duo more often. Clinton Crane is doing a masterful job with this artwork. It's, it's a little reminiscent of Alex Ross, but a lot more dark and brooding. Doppelganger is more real-looking and more frightening than I've seen him, and I can't help but geek out about some of these characters again being such a fan of Maximum Carnage from the 90s. Unfortunately, this five-issue series is only going to be bi-monthly, but if this first issue is any indication, it'll be well worth the wait. If you're a fan of the Spidey symbiote stuff or you've been jonesing for a fun Spidey comic book ride, I think this is where it's at. Brightest Day number 12. The last three issues have constantly trumped each other. It was slow going there for a minute, but Jeff Johns has really hooked me with this Deathstorm stuff. He's as good as anything in Blackest Night to me, and I love his nonsensical dialogue and his sarcastic one-liners. The main crux to this particular issue is Martian Manhunter, who returns to Mars and interacts with the other living green Martian, who is revealed to still be in existence a couple of issues ago. We get some interesting backstory about her in Mars, and we find that she did horrible things to Martians in the past, and to try to put the past behind her, she passed for human on Earth and try to completely forget that she was a Martian. There's a major change by the end of the issue that I think will really propel the story forward, and I can't wait for more. Superman Batman number 77. Someone at DC is doing a masterful job at finding different writers and artists each month who can tell fun, fully engaging, one-shot stories for the series. Since I jumped on and well before it, straight away from a regular team and ongoing arcs, and has turned to more of a world's finest format. These stories so far haven't felt like short cop-outs to me, like I might have expected, here we have a really fun adventure with Damien, the current Robin, and Supergirl, who join forces to solve a, a case of a mass grave in Metropolis. Damien, of course, acts superior and only refers to Supergirl as alien, reluctantly agreeing to team up with her. She doesn't take his arrogance lying down, and there's an amusing scene where she flies away from him in Gotham, telling him he'll have to find his own way to Metropolis. This is actually a Halloween issue, but a surprisingly well-handled one. This issue isn't necessary to the current ongoing Blackest Night, Brightest Day mythos, but it does add something to it I'd wager some Batman fans have been looking for since Blackest Night, though I hesitate to say just what. Suffice it to say, this is a pickup for the Blackest Night completist. Batman Robin number 15. A bunch of important things culminate in this issue, and man is it expertly put together. I'm not the biggest Damien fan, but I have to give him props for being so defiant against the Joker while he's so clearly at the Joker's mercy. Morrison has a really good handle on the Joker here, and I like to see a Joker who makes a lot of jokes. That might sound obvious, but that's not always how he's written, or else it isn't always clever. This one is, and he says a lot of things that are cleverly twisted and sometimes downright disturbing. There's also something about these red sunglasses with a top hat he's wearing that just creeps me out. There should be an action figure for this outfit from the issue. Dick and Damien finally confront Dr. Hurt, and everything comes to a head. There's an amazing full-page spread of the two of them decking him out that I love. And I don't really want to say any more. The end of the issue is clearly priming us for the huge changes happening in the Batman universe next month. And while I'm unsure how everything's going to pan out, I'm excited to see what happens. This is also some of Fraser Irving's best work. Batman Beyond number 5. This has been my most anticipated book month to month lately, and I'm going to be sad to see it end. I certainly hope the monthly manages to keep up this book's pacing and intensity. Finally, we get the backstory of this version of Hush, and it isn't exactly what we were led to believe last issue. I'm urging readers to pick this one up, even if you have to wait for trade, so I'm still not going to reveal exactly what's happening. But I do have to say, I was a little disappointed with who exactly Hush turned out to be. 
it certainly makes sense within the context of Batman Beyond, but it didn't go where I was hoping it would. It's still a really solid and engaging book. It just went with a plot point that's nearly a comic book cliche, I think, and I'm getting a little bit sick of it. I'm starting to really love this Batman Beyond version of Catwoman, and I hope she sticks around to appear in the monthly series. She and Terry have real chemistry, and there's a great scene where she has to talk with Bruce on Terry's comp system as he talks her through field medic procedures to take care of Terry's injuries after his battle last issue with Hush. Bruce himself is gripping with some real issues here, finally admitting he's been wrong in some places about how he dealt with Terry, and it's cool to finally see him call himself a stubborn old man. Commissioner Barbara Gordon finally gets a fair amount of panel time here, too. The mini ends next issue, and I hope the conclusion is as interesting as the rest of the series has been. And now some other books out this week that might pique your interest. From DC, there's Green Lantern Corps number 53, a new arc beginning with a new art team, when the Weaponer builds a shield out of White Lantern energy and targets Sinestro. DCU Halloween Special 2010 number 1, a one-shot scary tale featuring mainstream DC heroes and villains. And Supergirl number 57, Supergirl and Bizarro Girl on Bizarro World, what more can I say? For you Star Trek fans, there's a new one-shot from IDW called Star Trek Captain's Log Jellico. Remember Captain Jellico? He took command of the Enterprise when Picard was captured by Cardassians in the TNG episode Chain of Command. This comic gives Jellico a background. From Image, uh, Walking Dead number 78 comes out. It's one of Vince's favorite series. From Marvel, there's Deadpool number 28, Hulk number 26, Red Hulk teaming up with Thor against MODOK. Kick-Ass 2 number 1, John Romita Jr. and Mark Millar teaming up to do it again. Hit Girl is training Kick-Ass, while Red Mist puts together a team of supervillains. This, of course, is the first in six-issue mini. And those are my news and reviews for this week. I'm Captain Logan, wishing you pleasant reading and creative thinking.